What is up, Madden 25 Gamers? Welcome to this week's Depth Chart Podcast. This week we're going to be analyzing the New Orleans Saints, what they bring to the table. And uh, they are our team of the week. They're, we're going to be using them in the scheme of the week, and we're going to be setting them up today for that specific scheme. Um, so we're going to be utilizing the 46 speed package, and we're also going to be utilizing the uh, three wide receiver, one tight end, one running back personnel. So first things first, we like to auto reorder our depth chart. Uh, just kind of gets it back to best player in every scenario. Um, second things is I see that Luke McCown is a pretty fast uh, backup quarterback and, to Drew Brees. And let's take a look at the throwing stats here and see what the comparisons are. So we see here that Drew Brees has 89 throwing power, 98 short throw accuracy, 91 throw uh, medium, and 85 deep. He's going to be pretty good. Uh, he's going to be a great quarterback for us, and he's going to be the starter, of course. Luke McCown, I see, doesn't have quite the accuracy that Ryan Griffin has, uh, but, but Luke McCown does have better throw power and better athleticism, so I'm going to leave him at the backup position. When we go to the running back, I like to first categorize them by speed. So here we go, we're going to categorize them by their speed, and now we're going to look uh, really quick at their catching because um, again, this is a passing heavy offense. Uh, only a couple of running, our running formations are kind of scattered. Uh, and so you see all these backs catch really well, including the fullback, which is interesting. Uh, they all, these, uh, Pierre Thomas has good catch of traffic, a little bit better than Mark Ingram. He's going to be more of a bruiser, I'm sure. And so now we're going to look at the carry rating here. You see that Pierre Thomas has 96 carrying. Uh, that's really, really good. And uh, you see Ingram only has 86. Um, and then we're going to scroll back a couple of sectors here, and you see that we have uh, Darren Sproles has a 95 ball carry vision, 89 elusiveness. Really nobody else here has elusiveness, uh, as you can see, but they are all more power style backs. Thomas and Ingram are both really uh, pretty good as far as power backs go. Take a look at the trucking, you see 85, 83, 85. Um, and then real quick, we'll take a look at the uh, strength, agility, and acceleration categories. Uh, so here you see Ingram has pretty decent strength, uh, pretty decent acceleration, actually a little bit more of an athlete than, um, than Pierre Thomas. But here you also see Pierre Thomas brings that a uh, little bit more strength, not quite the acceleration and agility, but still very decent. And Cadet's probably the best athlete uh, out of the three. So, But I'm going to probably leave... Uh, Thomas is the backup. I'm going to move Traveris Cadet up one, and then I'm going to have Ingram at the fourth slot. And so my in game runner is going to definitely be Pierre Thomas. All right, at fullback, again, we like to put in the guys with the highest impact block for our special teams unit. Here we see Jed Collins has 90 impact block. That's amazing. Uh, we also, as we scroll down here, we see that Jimmy Graham has really good impact block. And uh, Michael Higgins does as well. So we're just going to leave these stock guys right here. And then for our special teams unit, we can sub in Josh Hill uh, to kind of block for Darren Sproles on the kickoff. Wide receivers, we're, there's going to be three wide receivers in this system. Our base formation, the Gun Normal Wing New York, places the second receiver as the slot receiver instead of just that far left. So uh, we just need to be noteworthy of that. And so here we see uh, all the Saints receivers have, these top three guys have really good catching traffic, really good catching, pretty good spectacular catch. Let's see if there's any Madden gems uh, on the roster. Here you see Nick Toon, 6'4", 81 spectacular catch, 76 catch in traffic. Looking pretty good there. Tanner, uh, not quite as good as Nick Toon. He does have that tremendous, spectacular catching. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put Nick Toon and see if I can find somewhere to put him. Uh, looks like he's a little bit better than Chris Gibbons. Uh, let's take a look at the speed of Gibbons. 85, yeah, definitely going to put Toon there at the 5 slot. I've got Meacham and Morgan. Uh, who to put here is the backup of the three. And I'm probably going to go with Morgan. You see a little bit more explosiveness then Meacham. And then real quick, let's check a look and see if there's anybody here that has a tremendous hit power rating. Uh, I see Mark Ingram has 30. Uh, Justin Drescher here has 67 hit power and 62 tackling, so I'm going to move him to the fifth receiver slot so that on special teams he's going to come into the ball game and make some uh, hits. But I'm going to know uh, that if Meacham and Morgan go out, I want to sub in Nick Toon. Uh, so if guys get tired, I can make those RB subs. And then I have Lance Moore for the slot trail. 
Kenny Stills is going to be that uh, big play receiver on the left side, and then uh, Marquise Colson is going to be the solo on the right. Our next category here is the tight end. Obviously, Jimmy Graham's probably going to be number one, but let's just take a look at the other tight ends and see what they bring to the table. And we see we have uh, Michael Higgins has 80 catching traffic. I don't know if any of you guys know that. Uh, he has got some pretty good catching traffic here, but he looks like the only tight end that really has that good catch and traffic rating. Benjamin Watson has a pretty good overall rating, but he and Josh Hill lack that catch in traffic. So really, if Jimmy Graham goes down, I'll probably go Benjamin Watson, then Michael Higgins, then Josh Hill. Um, but anyway, as far as setting this up for special teams, I want to put in the guys with the best impact block. So I'm going to put in Taron Armstead and Charles Brown. They're also, for the Saints, they're actually fairly fast. So you see that that'll be good for our special teams unit. Uh, I don't really like to mess with the offensive linemen in the depth chart podcast just because it saves a little bit of time, and these sometimes take a little longer. For our 46 defense, um, our front four uh, here is going to have to be really, really good. And I like to I like to put uh, more speedy guys here um, at the defensive ends, kind of outside linebackers, because I'm going to be using the 4-6 speed. So uh, we're just going to put the best uh, combination of power moves and finesse moves and block shed and all that. So let's take a look at these ratings here. And as you see here, Cameron Jordan has 90 power moves and 85 block shed. That's very effective. I'm sure he'll be a great uh, guy for the middle. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other guys here. Will Smith has 82 block shed. Um, Broderick Bunkley doesn't have a great pass rushing move. John Jenkins, look at this guy. He's, he's going to be a man in gym for us. So I think I already know what I'm going to do with the tackles is I'm going to put Binkley at the third slot here. And then where is... Okay. So I'm going to take my man Akiyam Hicks, Kenyon Coleman, and uh, Broderick Bunkley here. And I'm going to sub... So those guys are going to be the backups. And so I'm going to start Cameron Jordan and John Jenkins at defensive tackle. And so... Uh, that's probably the order that it'll go in right there. And then uh, now let's take a look at for the defensive ends. Who do I want to play uh, the defensive ends? I like them to have decent speed, decent strength. Um, so sp speed in kind of the 70s and strength in the – Cameron Jordan's a perfect defensive lineman, really. Uh, so someone like him. Uh, so let's see if we can find anybody that resembles those physical characteristics. You see Butler and Harrelson are fairly similar. So is Goet. Um you see that they're very athletic. Uh, Will Smith is kind of a more beefier guy. Um, so if we're thinking depth chart wise, who we're, where do we want to put Will Smith? We would want to put Will Smith on the weak side of the formation so that he can make it a stronger side. So, and then let's take a look at Glenn Foster here. You see that 78 speed, 86 strength. Looks pretty good physical attributes. Let's see what he does in the pass rush game. Uh, so you see he's got 73 block shed, 83 power moves. Let's see if that's comparable to uh, any of these guys up here. You see it's pretty comparable. I mean, it, it doesn't have that in tremendous amount, but uh, I think I definitely might put Foster uh, as a backup to the guys here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my backups be Foster and um, Butler, and then Foster and Butler on both sides. Okay, and then the right of screen defensive end, which is going to be the left of screen, or excuse me, the left end on your depth chart. Uh, I'm going to make that Will Smith, and I'm going to make Junior Gallette the left of screen defensive end, so that he's the guy that's pass rushing on that one play that we were talking about uh, that covered three blitz off the edge there. So that's my front four. Uh, so it's going to go left end Will Smith, right end Junior Gallette. Cameron Jordan at the defensive tackle number one slot. John Jenkins at the defensive tackle number two slot. Um, all right, so left outside linebacker. These guys are not going to really matter. So I'm just going to plug in the best per person there. So, for example, in a left outside linebacker, the only time you're ever going to see a left outside linebacker is in a 4-3 set, and typically that's going to be on the right side of the screen. So who is my worst linebacker that I can put there? Well, I like to put in um, my best... Uh, run stopping linebackers because if I go out of the speed package, I want to have a really good running stop run stopping package. So let's take a look at the best combination of block shed at the linebacker position. You see Curtis Lofton has 73, uh, Hawthorne has 72, 
uh, Reddick has 85 block shed. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to start Reddick at the right of screen outside linebacker, or excuse me, the right outside linebacker, which will be the left side of the screen. So Reddick's definitely going to be starting here. And then I think I'm going to put Lofton in the middle. I think that was already a conclusion. Let's take a look and let's compare. Let's compare Lofton and Reddick here. So let's take a look. They're pretty much even in speed and athletic well, athletic wise. Uh, let's take a look at the hardcore ratings here because I know that Reddick is a Madden gym. Uh, so we see here Lofton has a little better hit power. Um, Lofton has a little bit better, not as good ball lock shed, but a little better pursuit better coverage uh, in terms of man, better play recognition. So I think Lofton's definitely going to be the overall clear-cut number one. But following him is going to be Reddick, followed by Vilma. I think is that what's, that's probably what I'll do here. Because uh, you always want to have at least 70 zone coverage from your linebackers. And then, uh, what's this guy, Kyle Knox? So, um, yeah, that's probably what we're going to do here. And uh, Vilma, then Hawthorne. So... That's going to be my linebacking core. Uh, and then my right of screen linebacking core is going to be Reddick. Left of screen, left outside linebacker is going to be probably, uh, probably going to be Butler. Uh, probably going to be Harrelson and Butler. So then, then remember also, guys, that the second middle linebacker is on your special teams. So we like to make our top five hit power guys. So Gillette's going to be one, Lofton's going to be one, and Hawthorne's going to be one. So... That's what we're going to do. So we'll put Hawthorne in the middle, Lofton on the right, and we need to make sure that we get uh, Vilma here. So there's our linebacking core. So our, how our linebackers are going to work is our left outside linebacker is going to be Paralis Harrison, our middle linebacker is going to be Curtis Lofton, and our right outside linebacker is going to be Kevin Reddick. Now onto the secondary, the third and four uh, corners are the guys that are going to become the outside linebackers. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put uh, my beefier guys here. So I, I know that I'm definitely going to put Roman Harper as one of my as my uh, blitzer off that edge in that cover three. So I want to definitely put him at one of the slots. Um, and then another guy that I really really want to put at one of these uh, positions here is going to be Kenny Vaccaro and the reason I want to put Kenny Vaccaro in uh, is because I know he would be really good in that uh, kind of versatile style that he is but I'm going to actually probably end up putting Keenan Lewis is going to be my one of my corners uh, Jabari Greer is going to be one of my corners probably so I'm going to take um, probably the best blitzer out of these two and put them in let's see here 55 tackling because I want Picaro outside on the edge. So we're going to put Malcolm Jenkins in here. So I got to find someone to place him with. Um, so we're going to put... So here's how our corners are going to be set up. We got Malcolm Jenkins, Roman Harper. And then our fifth corner, we always want to put someone in there that has really high press coverage. Because if we ever go to a quarters formation, we can have that ability. So we're going to place... Um, we're going to place Patrick Robinson as our number five corner. And now we have Greer and Lewis as our secondary players. Uh, and then we're going to take our strong safety. We're going to make him Kenny Vaccaro. And then our backup strong safety is going to be Roman Harper for the special teams. And then we're going to put Kenny Vaccaro at the free safety backup for special teams. Um, and then we're going to take Corey White. We're going to make him our, I think, let's make sure this is right. Let's make sure his hit power. So he's got 81 hit power. So definitely going to make Corey Wright our user control player uh, because we're going to be able to make that 81 hit power, 93 speed, uh, really shine. And then the backup free safety, in case he gets hurt, is probably going to is just going to be the best guy that we can put in there. So let's take a look at zone coverage. And we see here that the best guy for the job is probably going to be. Uh, Trevin Wade. Um, the reason we're going to put Trevin Wade in there is because he can. He has that 88, 6, 63 strength, and he's got that is 61 uh, block shot, better, better block shot and tackling than most of the other guys, and has decent man in zone coverage. So um, th that's going to be our roster here, and then uh, just to kind of close things out, we're going to set up our special teams.
So for our kick returner, we obviously are going to be using Darren Sproles. And then I like to just find the faster guys here. So Joseph Morgan, uh, Rod Sweeting, Corey White, and then we'll just leave Lance Morgan because I know he has pretty good agility and acceleration. So let's see here. Um, you see Joseph Morgan is probably the best speed burner. And then uh, Lance Moore is probably going to be the fourth string. And then remember that the second string guy on your special teams is the blocker. So we talked earlier, we're going to place Josh Hill in there at that position. And then punt returner, we just like to do the same basic thing. So that's going to round out our depth chart podcast, guys. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out my post on Medium. Medium is one of my favorite uh, blog sites right now. It's got a lot of good stuff that you can do with it. So be sure to check me out on Medium and Twitter. Uh, but thanks for your time today, guys. Hope this video is beneficial. And this is our New Orleans Saints depth chart podcast.